Hello and welcome back to the June 3 workshop series where we take a deep dive into the features of June. In today's video, we're going to show you three ways that you can use the ARP Velocity feature within the arpeggiators to control various parameters within June 3. This technique is especially useful if you want to add extra character or texture into a sound or even just a bit more movement into pads, for example. If you find this video interesting, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And if you have any questions about what you see in today's video, please drop a comment down below. Okay, before we get started, let's have a listen to the three demos that we're going to look at, and then I'm going to show you how we use the ARP velocity to shape these sounds. And finally, sound number three. The first preset is the velocity base. So we're going to look at how to set up the arpeggiator, how to make the pattern, and then how to use the arpeggiator velocity. So to get started, we can just click ARP number one. And to get started, we're using just the first eight steps, not going through all the tabs. You can have up to 32 steps if you wish, but we're just going to use eight for this demo. So, and we're going to insert some rests to start. So we've just got the three note roll in bass. So just clicking and dragging down till you get the three lines, like so. And that leaves us with three notes in between each one of those rests. Then from here, we can set the velocity values. So for continuity, you don't have to do this because you can hear the note is already off. I'm going to set these to zero on the rests. And then from there, I'm going to set some just random values. We'll start in the 30s, high 40s maybe, and then sort of like the 60s or 70s. And I'm going to do the same here. We're not going to be trying to be precise or anything. We don't need to be. It'll add a little bit more humanization to the sound. And that will give us our velocity levels ready to attach to a parameter. So when you think velocity, you usually think volume. So we can start with that and we will do. And what we need to do on the mod matrix is select our source. So on line number one, ARP1 velocity. We can select a destination from the drop down, or we can just click and drag onto the destination, which is our oscillator one volume. So with oscillator one set to zero, you can hear the full effect of the zero volume and then the rise in volume to create a bit of a bounce and some texture and a little bit of interest into the bass. And we can make this more pronounced by doing this. If we wanted to, just so you can hear what is actually happening, I'm just going to return these to a lower level. Sound a little bit too much there. And what you could see I've done here is just turned it up to 50%. So we have a minimum volume for the note, but where you could see it was set was around that 50% mark. And that gives it a baseline audio level. So it's going to start at 50% volume and then it's going to work its way up in volume from that point based on these velocity values. Perfect, that is all set up and ready to go. But we can add a little bit more depth into there. And we're gonna use the filter envelope amount on filter one, and we're gonna use the chorus. You can hear it adds brighter notes in as the velocity level gets louder and we also have movement and bounce into the sound as well. And this can be more pronounced by reducing the envelope amount. And with the kick added in there.
So we can add this onto any parameter within June. And for this particular sound design, we're going to add it onto chorus. And we could just turn the chorus up that you could just have done with it, but then you've got the chorus sort of blanketed over the sound design all the way across. And if you've gone to the effort to insert the arpeggiator sequence and use the velocity values in there, we might as well see if we can use that on effects as well, just to add a little bit more extra depth. At this stage, we could use ARP 1 velocity again, but I'm going to use ARP 2 just to demonstrate that we can utilize both. However, you can't select both ARPs on the same voice. So how do you get around this? Well, we can just set the amount of voices to two. And then on the second voice, we can deselect ARP number one and select ARP number two. But on the second voice, we don't want to hear it. So we can set the voice to zero and set the oscillator level to zero. So we don't hear anything. It is purely just an auxiliary channel to feed arpeggiator data into the first oscillator, or should we say the first layer here? We are going to jump into ARP number two and we're going to create the same pattern like this. And I'm going to return these to zero just for continuity. And we're going to make these a little bit more pronounced, but I'm going to have them slightly different. So we're going to start a bit louder, a bit quieter, and then back to sort of loud. And then maybe the same as the first pattern, sort of quiet to medium to louder. And this way we can add some extra depth into the sound by having different velocity levels playing alongside the originals for the volume and the filter envelope amount. And all we need to do is go back to the mod matrix and select ARP to velocity. We can drag and drop this onto the chorus level and we can hear the effects of our second arpeggiator now. So at the moment, you might be thinking it just sounds like we've just turned up the dry wet and nothing's happening. So I'm going to make it a little bit more pronounced by going back here and making these numbers more drastic. Now you can hear the chorus turning on and off based on these extreme velocity values from zero to 100% volume or 100% mix, shall we say. But by adding these in as random figures like this, we can create some interesting movement in the sound. So you can hear it's not just a blanket layer. So that's another interesting avenue you can take with the arpeggiators. You can actually use both on the same sound just to control the velocity levels and just give a little bit of extra texture and depth into your sound design. And next up, we have the keys to the door preset. And this is just a classic keys sort of preset made with some FM. And what we're going to use the arpeggiator for on this one is to control the level of the delay. So I'm just giving you some options on how we can manipulate the sound design. But before we add it to the delay, I'm going to add it to the reverb. I'm going to return this to zero so we have no reverb on the sound. And I'm going to make you sure you can hear how obvious it is, just like I did with the chorus and the extreme numbers. And from there, when we attach it to the delay mix, you're going to be able to understand that there's going to be different levels of mix on the delay there. So I'm just going to pluck out some random numbers here, just create something so it's obviously different. Make me make that a bit quieter. That's maybe more like that and something like that. Again, just using eight steps at a rate of one over 16 in this case, that seems to be knocked down. And for this one, we're not using any rests, so we're going to make use of all eight steps. So I'll make sure reverb is selected so you can see the dry wet marker. Here we can select ARP1 velocity attach it to our dry wet of the reverb. You can see that's a bit too intense, so I can see why I would have left that at rate of one over eight, so eighth notes. So you can hear some of the louder notes coming through at the louder velocities, and that's where you can utilize making a little bit of rhythm in the background. 
So we could do something, maybe reduce that there, have that like that, maybe that one louder there. It's a very linear rhythm, but you can see what I'm trying to get at. We can create some interesting texture on top of the sound. That's very obvious, and I'm just using the reverb to display that, but we're not actually going to attach it to the reverb. So I'm going to return the reverb to the 50% marker. And instead of having this, I'm just going to remove it. And I'm going to attach this now to the delay dry wet. And from the demonstration with the reverb, you can hear the delay is being applied in different layers with different velocity layers from the ARP sequencer. And you can experiment with different lengths and different rates. Just see the length as a decay knob, just like you get on your amp envelope. You can hear that sounds more interesting as opposed to returning the amount to zero. And that is keys to the door complete. And finally, we have organ night. So this is an organ preset that I've just made from one of the wavetables. And we're gonna use the arpeggiator just to create some movement again using the arp velocity. If you're getting notes modulating like this, which is typical of an arpeggiator, we need to switch the mode down here to silent. So it will now operate everything that the arpeggiator does, but it won't modulate the notes. That way, when we start assigning things in the mod matrix using the velocity section here, we're just going to have the effects of the velocity. So with that said, let's get started on the design. Turn the filter back to where it was. So it's a very quiet sound at the moment. Starting with the source, we're going to select ARP1 velocity as usual. And this is going to control filter 2 cutoff. I'm going to drag that there. And I'm going to increase this to 100% so we can hear everything that is happening to an exaggerated degree, and then we can dial it back after. I'm just going to set some random velocities, so I'm going to have a fairly quiet note. So let's listen to how that sounds. So you can hear now we're using this as a classic filter opening technique and we can reduce this amount to a nice level that gives it a little bit of smooth texture. We could use the LFO one here as well to control filter number two. So then we get a movement of the filter in an oscillating fashion, which is currently set to this shape here. So you can see in there, it's the sample and glide. So this adds extra movement into the sound as well. So instead of using LFO one, actually, we'll use LFO number two. We'll set this to a slow rate, let's say two bars. We're gonna reduce the amounts. So it's just like a mix knob. And with that modulation added with LFO2, you can see this filter is now oscillating back and forth like this, if you can see where the mouse is moving back and forth, and that's gonna give a different starting point every time for the art velocity to start from. So we're gonna get a little bit more added movement and texture in there. You can hear that it gets brighter with the art velocities when the ramp is reached its peak. So when it's at its loudest or most open on the cutoff and then a lot more subdued at the lower levels of the sine wave. And there we have it. That's all three presets complete. Let's have a listen through them again in context with the percussion that I've put in there as well. Thank you very much for watching. I've been Demis Helen and I'll see you all in the next video.